All right. And then I'm going to switch the screen so that we get two Good Morning Churches because there's some people not on here. Here we go. One, two, three. Good morning. Okay, great. Because you don't know who's on my screen. We're going to go to screen number two. Oh, here we go. One more time. Ready? One, two, three. Good morning. Hey, Jess. Hey, Tam. How are you? I'm good. Hey, you want some tea? Yeah. Awesome. I have been looking forward to sitting on our deck. Oh, man. It is so... Cheers. So beautiful out. I feel like I finally acclimated to winter. Yeah, I don't think it's ever going to be summer again. That's right. Oh. Yeah. Hey, there you go. There you go. Hey! hey! Good morning, church! Good morning, church! Great to see you this morning. Uh, thanks for the everybody at the annual meeting last week. It was uh, great to have you all there. Great energy. Good uh, to be together in that virtual way. So thank you so much. I wonder how many people were in their pajamas for the first time ever for an annual meeting. I know it was a few people's first Zoom meeting. Yeah, that was kind of it's a great job, everybody getting on. It was some of our like third Zoom meeting of the day. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Uh, let's see. I'd like to say thank you to the brand new council members and the old council members. Well, you know, seasoned council members. We had a first uh, meeting on Monday night and it was fantastic. Okay, here's our 2021 council. Thanks, everybody. Yep, and we had uh, Ash Wednesday, so Tammy's going to share a little bit during discovery time, but that was uh, another nice way to share the faith in kind of a renewed way. So uh, yeah, thanks for that. We're in Lent. So uh, happy, happy Lent. Happy, happy Lent. Lent. Happy Lent. Happy Lent. Cheers. Happy Lent. Look at that. It's sinking in there. <laughs> I'm just going to let it do its thing. Anyway, uh, we're talking about the light of the world today. So we've got a... A great story from John's Gospel about seeing and being seen and uh, the way that uh, Christ illumines our lives. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Great. Let's get, let's get her moving. All right. Why don't we, uh, why don't we, you want to pray us in? Sure. Sounds like the chickens are trying to um, help out, but here we go. Uh, let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much uh, for this snowy morning. Uh, bless our day together. Show us how we can be the light to one another as uh, your light shines through us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, I think we'll just sit out here, read the paper, enjoy our hot beverages, and think about July. That's right. This is great. Mm, lovely. Good morning again. So for discovery today, I would like to highlight that we here we are kicking off Lent 2021. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who helped make those packets uh, come to life that we put together for Lent for every family in uh, St. Paul Church. Because of you and your hard work and delivery and putting little tiny ashes and bags and all of that, uh, this week we had several families that reached out to say thank you for uh, just making Ash Wednesday possible 
I mean, you could do it no matter what, but just make it easier and feel like we're a community doing it together. So thank you for making that possible. Uh, there's a few pictures that um, we have of families as well as a special guest who, among a few people that said they did it with their friends and shared um, Ash Wednesday together, uh, here we go. Hi, my name is Su Yin. On um, um, Ash, Ash Wednesday, uh, in the morning, I bring this, uh, pray, uh, this paper with me. I made a copy, I gave for another co-worker. And in the morning, we all get together, we read the pray together. And then afterward, I will take the Ash, I had the cross, um, uh, made a cross in each, each person, the forehead. And after they tell me, if it wasn't me, they have no nowhere to get a cross in the forehead. And they are so appreciated. Wonderful. So Wing, thank you so much for sharing your story of how you shared uh, ashes with your coworkers and friends and had probably a very special, unique night that any other year would never have happened. So thank you for sharing that. Several of um, others of you have mentioned that as well, uh, that you got together with friends and were able to participate in Ash Wednesday together. So looking forward to walking through Lent like no other with you this year. And um, I pray that your light continues to shine during this one of darkest times of our church year. And uh, God bless you. Don't forget to look at the lighthouse. A reading from John. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind. 
And then he said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as, far for, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing, astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin." But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. Word of God, word of life. Welcome to my outdoor studio. As I've shared uh, previously, this is becoming one of my favorite places to, to be and to show you. This is South Cove here in Old Saybrook. I love coming down here. Uh, no beautiful sunrise this morning. Uh, maybe we'll get to see it in the next 15 or 20 minutes. We'll see, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, it has resumed snowing, and it's very cloudy. You can maybe make out the lighthouse very, very faintly right there. And yet, uh, our hope is that light shines in the darkness, that light scatters the darkness, uh, and nothing can overcome it. And uh, today, Jesus promises that, where he says, I am the light of the world. And we have this, this powerful story about seeing, about being seen, and about the light of the world shining through. Uh, one thing to, just to notice, uh, when I think of snow, every time it snows, I, I'm always uh, grateful and I'm, I'm mesmerized by it. I love the beauty of it and what it does to the earth. It seems to renew all things and uh, bring, bring a brightness and a a sense of freshness, even though on a, a day like today it's it's pretty damp and cold and bitter, uh, and yet it's beautiful. Uh, I don't know if you saw some any images from around the country uh, of the snow, or even poked your head out the window. I love uh, the bayou in Louisiana and seeing those pictures of of those trees frozen and and uh, 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 erupting with with the snow and the light that's reflecting off of it. Just just so beautiful. But do we see also what's underneath? And I think that's what today is about. As you know, a lot of people are suffering in Texas. Uh, and we can, we can claim all kinds of reasons why. Uh, maybe it's just because the infrastructure wasn't ready for it or built for it. Uh, maybe it was complacency by uh, politicians and the, the power company. Uh, certainly the optics of the senator going to Cancun while people are without power and water and heat was was not the way, <laughs> probably, probably should have been smarter uh, than making those choices. But uh, what we always tend to overlook, uh, and it seems that this has been the case for years now, is, is that rather than actually see people for who they are, as, as, as people in need of the light, just as you and I are in need of the light, we're very quick to point fingers, to blame, 
to shame and to overlook them. And I think that's exactly what is going on uh, in this story. Jesus meets this man who's born blind, and he even says so God's glory can be revealed in him. We might wrestle with what that means. Uh, I'm never one to think that uh, people being at a disadvantage or, or people suffering at others' hands is God's intention for us. But uh, uh, what, is, what is God's intention for us is to help, is to enter into that, to suffer alongside, to heal, uh, to make whole again. That, uh, that is what Jesus is all about and, and who you and I uh, should be all about. And what we see happening in this story is all, all kinds of interesting things uh, because the people who have known this man his whole life don't see him. They need to uh, to remember, is this really the guy who's been sitting here after Jesus uh, gave him sight? Uh, uh, what would his parents say? Uh, did you check with this, this Jesus guy? Who do, who do you think he is? He can't really be the guy who did this, is it? Nobody seems to see anything. And Jesus points that out. Those who think they see are really, are really the blind ones. Perhaps that is something for all of us to work on. Who do we see and how do we see them? Are we just quick to, to jump on, on the anger bandwagon of, of blaming each other for the way the world is or, or do we see ourselves as contributors towards it and as those who can help bring bring the light of Christ into that situation. Or, uh, the flip side of it too, do, do we feel like we are really ever seen? And I think for a lot of us, the answer is no. People don't really see us. They walk past us. They don't understand who we are or what we value or what we can contribute or even the pain we have hidden. And we remain waiting for that light to come. Uh, a few years ago, we got rid of cable, and as a result, we have a bunch of apps that we watch TV on, you know, Netflix, Hulu, and Disney Plus, and all the rest. But uh, I wanted to watch Star Trek, so I, I got CBS All Access, which will soon be Paramount, I guess, is what they're going to do. Um, but anyway, because we have CBS, that is the, the lone network that we have. So we have been watching uh, Nora O'Donnell tell us the news at 6.30 in the evening. And this Wednesday, on Ash Wednesday, she had this little great story about unifying America and what that looks like. And she highlighted two sets of newly found friends. One is led by Gwen Johnson in Kentucky. And the other by Paula Green in Massachusetts. And three years ago, so this is not a recent deal, three years ago, pre-COVID, in the midst of what we've all been experiencing as just a highly divided uh, American culture, they decided to seek each other out. And so 11 people from Kentucky in, in red, red country traveled north 15 hours on a bus uh, to meet with a bunch of blue state liberals from Massachusetts. And what they discovered is they, they weren't so different after all. Uh, Paula Green told a little bit of a story. When we first got together, we didn't just dive into division. What we started doing is we started telling about who we are, about sharing stories of our families. And within a very short amount of time together, the room was filled with with tears, tears of joy and sadness and compassion, where people actually saw their humanity in one another. They actually saw each other, not as the enemy to be overcome, but as, get this, you'll, you'll like this, as human beings. And they met together uh, three times in person over the next few years, and since this uh, pandemic dealio has been upon us. They meet on Zoom every, every month to check in with each other in these newly, newly found friendships. I mean, eventually they, they did get into uh, some of their political differences and, and the reality of what that means. And yet uh, one comment was, uh, you know, but uh, gun lovers and tree huggers survived. And we look out for each other. 
that's what that's what Americans do some light shining to actually see each other as created in God's image as the sinful broken people that we are and actually acknowledging the pain that all of us inflict upon each other even unknowingly because we we see things as as one way or the other as in or out as with us or against us as friend or foe and yet when we can actually see not just with our eyes but with our hearts we can notice the people that are around us as human beings amazing you probably saw the Bruce Springsteen Jeep commercial at, at the Super Bowl, and the sentiment of it is nice. I think the outcome he wants is good, that we should work towards common ground, that we share more than we, we have uh, that's, that's different. And, and there was some goodness in that commercial, but if you were like me and like so many others I've, I've talked to since, it fell short on so many ways because it never really acknowledged the pain the pain that we inflict on each other, the pain of these last several years, the way we have dehumanized each other, the way we have not seen each other's humanity. I mean, we can't just heal until we try to repair what's broken. And perhaps that is the greatest calling of this, this passage completely, is, is Jesus comes and, and enters to, to bring life to this situation. And it's not really about this man's eyes or the vision he has. It's about this entire community being able to realize fully how they've excluded, how they've caused pain, how they, how they belittle those on the fringe, how they have overlooked and stepped by and maybe even stepped on this man for all of his life. And what Jesus brings to the fore is for us to acknowledge that, to own it in ourselves and for each other. Then can we find common ground? Yeah. Then can we lift up what we value? Yeah. But as, as I think both, both Gwen and Paula did in their meetings together, they, they wanted to acknowledge their humanity first then talk about their brokenness, then, then work on how they can mend the fences, so to speak. And it's there where light can shine through. I mean, we can do amazing things. It sounds so impossible, and yet this week we put another rover on the surface of Mars. I was mesmerized watching the, the feats of engineering and, and human ingenuity and just the vision of what needed to be cast to be able to accomplish that. Uh, and the way it brought so many people together, not just in our country, but from around the world to be able to say, this is, this is what humanity can do. Uh, we, we can do great, big, bold things. And yet I'm reminded of uh, uh, Jerry Manlove, who was probably regarded, at least in my circles, as kind of the grandfather of Lutheran camping. Um, he, I was sitting at a table with him years ago at a conference, and with tears in his eyes and sobbing, uh, we were just in the process, I think, of launching the space station or something, something like that. It was in the mid-late mid 90s. And he, he said, you know, we can, we can do these amazing things, and yet we can't love our neighbor. Uh, and isn't that what Jesus moves us to see? Isn't that the vision we should be working on? From our friends in Texas who are, who are suffering in the midst of this storm, to the people we overlook each day, to the way that we uh, demonize one another because we have different viewpoints, uh, the way we want to just gloss over the pain that we can, that we contribute to and, uh, and, and, and overlook and maybe don't even see that we contribute to. Uh, and yet, isn't that the calling that we have? Isn't that what the light, if there's the lighthouse again, uh, is, is, is illuminating, is getting the darkness to run away from, is, is that our calling is to love each other, to love each other, to bring that same, that same care and compassion that Jesus brought to this man and to, 
his naysayers who said you can't be do the one doing this uh, and, and to the doubters who said well let's ask his parents that can't really be him to the people that didn't believe this man in his own story and how many stories do we not believe in people because we know that can't really be the way it is or they must be exaggerating or politicizing it or, or, or just wanting me to, to, to feel bad uh, and instead Jesus as the restorer of us all shines light on us all shines light on our brokenness and shines light on forgiveness and healing that is right before our very eyes. Wednesday was Ash Wednesday. Uh, a lot of us smeared ashes upon our foreheads, uh, remembering that we are dust and to dust we shall return. It is seeing ourselves for who we are. Uh, that we have not called ourselves into existence, that we, we do not determine our ultimate fate that we must somehow surrender to the limits of our humanity and to the good news that Jesus brings. That God doesn't want us to, to, to suffer or, or for death to be the final word against us. It is, it is life. It is salvation. It is walking in the light of Christ. And we see that today. A friend of mine, he's kind of more of a acquaintance. I, I've never actually really met him in person. Uh, we've been friends online for a while though. He's a Navy chaplain. He's just a really cool dude. Uh, every time he posts something, I think, man, this guy's got quite an adventurous life in front of him. Uh, but he posted something on Ash Wednesday that was, that was really, uh, just pardon my puns, eye-opening uh, as to his experience. And he was, he was kind of saying, you know, uh, it is a place of, 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 of privilege and uh, a vantage point uh, of distance for us a lot of times to put ashes on uh, because we don't experience death and exclusion on a daily basis. Uh, that there are so many people in this world that, that on a daily basis have to deal with death or, or have to deal with being overlooked or have to be looked with, with being uh, dehumanized. Uh, or, or forgotten, or, or not heard, or seen for who they are. And his experience uh, as a gay man in the church was, was all of those things. And he was expressing his, his anger and lament and faithfulness and the beauty of who he is as a child of God and a leader. Uh, to say, look, we need to, we need to be able to see exactly what's going on around us. And for those of us who, who have had the privilege of, of sitting back and being at a distance and putting the ashes on and saying how wonderful it is to, to be able to do this, uh, it, it, it's a time to, to own our own brokenness in, in the way that we haven't lived up to our calling, to love one another as God loves us. And I'm thankful for that witness to point that out. I'm also thankful uh, uh, to see how we've, we did Ash Wednesday this year. Uh, uh, Tammy highlighted that in Discovery Time a little bit, a, a, few, a few different stories of, of people taking this, this ministry uh, upon themselves in ways that we never probably thought were possible or, or could see for ourselves, but be able to, to mark each other with a cross and know the hope that we have there. And to be able to take that and, and share it with others outside of our community and mark them with, with the cross, not only in, in the, the, the sign of our, our sinfulness and death, but also in the hope we have uh, for life that comes through the light of the world. Also, so beautiful to see. Do you feel like you've been seen? You know, I remember one time I was in my office and somebody uh, came in so upset. It was actually at the time I was, I was leaving New Canaan and coming here to Old, Old Saybrook. And uh, the, the force of her anger was directed at me. Um, she was very upset about uh, our denomination. <laughs> about uh, the ELCA, about uh, the, the, the way we operated our structures, the, the merger that happened in the late 80s 
and as she was yelling at me and, and pointing at me and shaking her fist at me and, and yelling uh, about how bad the merger was and we should have never even done it, I, I said to her, I was in confirmation at the time, I'm sorry. Uh, and I asked her to leave my office because I was getting mad at getting yelled at for things that had nothing to do with me. But I didn't see her. I did not see her. I did not see the pain that she had been carrying for those 25 years at the time. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't see that I was representing that entity, even though personally I had nothing to do with it. Um, I, I, wasn't able, I wasn't able to see her pain there. And my own, my own blindness of, of feeling uh, uh, innocent or attacked or uh, misunderstood myself uh, got in the way of me being able to help her. Uh, and instead, uh, instead of, of reaching out in compassion, which we're called to do, uh, I reached out in anger. And it's very easy for all of us to do that, isn't it? Uh, I mean, this happens all the time. And uh, I think one of the beautiful things about this story, about, about Gwen and, and, and Paula from Kentucky and from Massachusetts, from the reddest of red places and the bluest of blue places, is that they didn't deny each other for who they were. In fact, they honored each other for who they were. That didn't mean they agreed. Uh, that didn't mean they, they saw that the other one had it right and they had it wrong, or that they had it right and the other one had it wrong. Truth be told, we know none of us get it completely right. And if we're really going to grow as people, we need people who are different from us in our lives. And we need to be able to, to see their value and what they can add for us, even if it comes in the form of pain. Uh, I read a meme recently that said, when someone says they hate you, what they're really saying is, you hurt me. And I've been thinking about that, because where are the places where people just seem just the worst? And rather than write them off, or overlook them, or say that they must be the blind ones in the story, so let's get angry at them and get rid of them, uh, maybe it's, it's about reaching out to people's pain, not with a shaking finger, but with an open hand of, of compassion in the same way that Jesus lifts up this man and gives him new eyes to see. Uh, because it's the people at the end of the story that even though they've witnessed this miracle, this amazing, beautiful thing that Christ has done, they don't see anything. They just don't get it. And I wonder how many instances in our own lives on a day-to-day -day basis where we do exactly the same thing. And so in this regard, I think we really can start to imagine ourselves as the blind man in this story. I mean, often I like to put myself in these stories or, or invite people to put themselves into this story uh, uh, too often, I think we are the, the people privileged in this story, right? We're the religious people on the side, asking all the questions, doubting, and, and maybe even uh, folding our arms and say, yeah, I, I don't believe it at all. But there are times, obviously, for all of us, where we have felt like that man, born blind from birth, who, who has not been seen by others, who have, not, uh, who have not been valued, who have not been embraced, who have not been invited, who have not been welcomed, who have not been, been seen, for both the gifts we have and the burdens we carry. And we make all kinds of assumptions about who each other are all the time, either by the way we, we reveal ourselves and hide things, uh, or by the way uh, others see us, uh, by the way we carry ourselves. Uh, and and we, don't, we don't enter into a conversation like, like, like Paula and Gwen, or so bold to do, inviting each other to actually see each other and where they're coming from and how we might build something beautiful and new together because the light has entered the world. I have a few friends. Uh, well, I have friends. But I, I have a few friends uh, that, that enter my life at different times and they maybe are closer and, and more distant at times. 
uh, just because life happens. Uh, but they're people that I would say really see me. They, they understand. They know where I'm coming from and what I hope for, where I feel like I fall short. And the things I don't want to do or feel called to, or the things I really do feel called to and feel held back by. And I hope I do the same, same for them. Because sometimes having an outside person that you trust, that really, really sees you, can help you see things beyond what you can see for yourself. And in doing that, you can see others and learn that same, same compassion that Christ keeps, keeps calling us to. Jesus claims he is the light of the world. At the beginning of the gospel, uh, in, the, in the introduction, we hear that, that hope that when light enters, it scatters the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. We've, we've had some dark times. Uh, dark times through this pandemic, dark times through our, our political life together over the last uh, generation. Dark times for our own personal struggles in the midst of things that are beyond us. Dark times in our own, if we care to admit it. Sin and brokenness and destructive ways that we treat each other. And yet, the light comes. The light shines. The light reaches out to you and me. The light forms a, a, little, a little pool of mud and, and puts it on our eyes and, and tells us to go wash. That light it wraps us in, in a warm embrace of compassion and love and welcome and understanding. That light sends us out to each other and into the places everybody else has overlooked. Today is a day in the midst of this, this start of Lent to admit our own blindness, to, to know that there are many things we, we don't see. It's a day to, to be seen by this God of compassion and light that breaks into our world. And not only forgives, but restores and sends us to bring life. Uh, today is, is a day to see other people, to go looking for the lost among us. We know the brightness comes. We know in the bleak, cold winter that spring is on its way. We know that in the midst of the things we don't understand, the great I am is among us. We know that out of death comes life. We know as we stand in sin and death that Easter is coming. Jesus is the light of the world. Stand in that light today and see with fresh eyes. Peace be with you. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your warrior, holy people. Light for the world to see. Praise be your light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Praise be your light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. 
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. We pray. For the world. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. We pray for the church. Pray for the sick, the suffering, and those who care for them. We pray for those in harm's way and those who protect us. We 
pray for those in need, the overlooked and the forgotten. We pray for ourselves. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. We pray giving thanks. Hey, we are at the point in the morning where it's my opportunity to say thank you for all that you do to keep each other going, encourage each other, reach out to your friends, family, and the neighbors, and continue to be generous. So thank you for supporting our ministry here at St. Paul and all the ways that you make ministry happen. Thanks for sending your offering in either through the mail or dropping it off or through your bank account or by using the website. We really appreciate all that you do to continue to be church together as we celebrated last week in our annual meeting just an amazing uh, number of things and number of people doing extraordinary ministry right now so thank you so much and uh, stay warm out there Savior 
are still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise for sin? Ah, well, thanks for joining us on what has been another balmy winter's uh, winter's day. So thanks for joining us this Sunday. Okay, who says you need to wait until you know May to enjoy your deck? Get out there, people! This is fantastic. That's right. It's awesome. So uh, remember uh, to be the light, to stand in the light, to share the light, to see each other, and to give thanks that uh, Christ sees you as we uh, continue through Lent together. That's right. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. Have a great day, everybody. God bless. So oh, mine is too. <laughs> hey, Tammy, did you see my tea anywhere? I left it someplace. <laughs> I think it's outside. All right, I'll go look for it. I don't like iced tea on a hot day. Cheers. coming on out. Yep, I just tossed some food down there. He's the only adventurous one.